you can start with uh, Janet, and after that, we'll, we'll try to follow the same, yeah, the same uh, order. Well, I guess I guess I I really appreciated the history that Monique gave earlier. Um, I thought that there was one thing big thing missing at the end where she talked about the future. Um, she talked about answering questions that are already there and talked about how um, using, using intelligent tutoring systems in new kinds of scenarios like MOOCs raises, raises new issues and those were basically issues about data analysis. But I think that what was missing and what I want to think about in terms of the future, I, I think I said this this morning, is um, to me, you guys aren't going to like this, okay? But to me, um, intelligent tutoring systems, I, I actually have two points. You'll like the second one, you won't like the first. So to me, intelligent tutoring systems were the new technology of the 80s, the 70s, 80s, maybe even the 90s. Um, and I think that, um, you know, they, it, was, it was a very technology-centric approach to addressing how to foster learning. And, um, and I think, and you know, it fits school pretty well, fits training pretty well, but there's a need for another kind of education nowadays. There's a need for people to be not, learning deeply is important, definitely. <laughs> but we also, we have a need for people to, for more people to learn deeply and um, for people to learn all kinds of um, skills and practices um, for, you know, for living in the world and especially for living in the global economy that go beyond the kinds of things that you can do in an intelligent tutoring system. Um, what I said this morning about that was that, you know, that ITSs usually don't take engagement, engaging people over long periods of time into account. They're about putting somebody in a situation and the intelligent tutoring system acts as a teacher, but the students don't have any real agency. And I think that I, to me, you know, the thing that's really important to the future is saying, okay, so we've been really successful at a bunch of things, okay? And now, how do we think about integrating what we've been successful about into pedagogies of the future, into educational approaches of the future? And to me, that's, to me, that's, that's huge in terms of where I think, where I'd like to see the field go. Now, I'm talking as an outsider. I've never been an insider in the field, though you did invite me to be part of this discussion. Um, the second thing, so you might not like that one, but I think you'll like the second one. It's also something that I, 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 said this, I started to say this morning. You know, all these years <laughs> of doing this intelligent tutoring system stuff, you know, what is it, like 30, 40 years, something like that, right? And what is there to show for it? There's, and I'm not criticizing anybody when I say that. <laughs> I'm just stating a fact about the world. <laughs> um, what is there to show for it? There are these training systems that are used in the military. Um, there are training systems that are used by some companies. Okay, and there's the, um, um, you know, the math stuff that comes out of CMU. We haven't made the world a better place. And, um, and this is the kind of research that needs to be making the world a better place. That's what it's about. And I think that, you know, I think that the reason, one of the reasons we haven't made the world a better place, I think it's a cop out to say we've got to wait for policy before we can, we, you know, can, we're just researchers and we have to wait for policy. 
I think there are things we can do, and the, the big thing that we as researchers can do is think about integration of functionality um, as an intellectual challenge. It's not just about, that it's not just about, as a researcher, looking at my little narrow part of intelligent tutoring systems that I worry about, or my little narrow part of pedagogy that I worry about, or my little narrow part of assessment that I worry about. That's not enough. There have to be some people who we are educating, some of our PhD students who we are educating and who will join us in places like this, who are interested in how you take all that stuff and you put it together, and how you take all that stuff and you put it together into packages that can really make a difference. And I think that, um, that that's the other you know, future thing that I think is so important. The research is important and I'm not saying it's not important. I'm just saying there are these two other things that we've got to be helping our students learn to do. I tried to answer number three. How is the learner's affect considered? You know, we now, with our system, every single time a student is on board, we're talking about his affect or her affect, and we're constantly working on it. And the system now does reason about it. And as I said, we're, we're stuck at the point of figuring out what you do for each person, but we're definitely at that place. So, and then in, the, in terms of the second one, I think Janet had the most to say about that mm -hmm. solution from cognitive science and AI research. If, you, if every time you build one of these systems, you not only think about what you're doing with the technology and how that student's learning, but what are you contributing to the field of learning, the science of learning? So even though you guys are just starting your system, have you, are you gonna discover something new about how people learn logic? You know, that would be nice. And you should, you know, and all of us should. So every time we you know, you use a little character to teach math, we think, do people like to have being top of the character? Who likes it? Who learns from it? Who doesn't learn from it? And then also this thing of looking at a, a board, a dashboard. You know, does it work? For whom does it work? Um, we have to ask those questions because, you know, as Janet says, we are supposed to be making a difference. And in truth, if you want to ask what has happened in the last 30 years, nothing has happened to the classrooms. I can't speak for Canada, but for the United States, the classrooms look just the same. And in rural and poor areas, they look worse than just the same. Yeah, or they're worse. So 30 years and the classrooms haven't changed. What is going on here? You know, why aren't we in the classroom? And you know, there are many people who come to a thought about that, something like the teacher is actually standing there and guarding. Teachers sometimes don't want you to come into the classroom all the time. And uh, you know, that's, that's a huge problem. So either we win over the teachers, we can't ignore them. We have to win them over and we're not giving them enough training, we're not giving them enough experience with these things. Etc. And very few teachers are, are really involved. They, I mean, I don't know how you guys do, but we, you know, beg and ask the teachers to to experiment with our system once in a while, and they do. But that's it. Or sometimes they do want to continue, but they don't continue without the researchers around. So that might be one point. But the other point I think is we need this. Someone mentioned this. We need this younger cadre of teachers, ones who've grown up with a computer in their hand because it's not easy to take some of these other people who've done it the same way for 30 years and say, let's try this other way. They may try it, and then if you turn your back, they will turn their back at the same time. I mean, they have the power over us. So if we can wait and get the younger teachers and really start working with them. For instance, no person should be graduated from a college of education today without learning about technology for education. And they are. I mean, do you have a, I don't know what you have here, but there's some place there's a college of education. Do you know if they are forced to take a course on technology? It wouldn't matter though, because they produce stuff. There's yeah. nothing out there. There's nothing out there. It's true. It's well, so there are some books that will help them find technology that they will download. It's not, it's not the same as this, but at least, at least. It won't matter. I think it's anybody who takes a course. They have to be, they have to be, um, have been immersed in pedagogy. Yeah. yeah, and in the, in the States we are stuck, it's interesting, in the States we are very stuck by these uh, exams that you may have heard the stories of Tom before, and teachers are so uh, bowled over by this, they spend almost the whole year 
taking a form of the study, of the coming study, of the coming exam, and giving that to kids and training the kids all year long on that. And what's interesting is I'm traveling in Europe, and England has just given up these common core ideas. They've given up standardized tests. France, I think, is very Okay. Do you have do you know if you have standardized tests required? Required of students in France? No, no, I mean in every subject, like in math and in English, do you? Does it require the same, you know, do all students take a, an exam? Yeah. Yeah, so, so you do. Well, the Brits have get, gotten rid of it, and we've just started it when they got rid of it. We have it. And you have it? Yeah, we have the exam. And it's a, a, across the country. But, but, but you know, the, 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 the truth that they don't want you to know <laughs> is that in all these places, there are huge, huge tutoring industries. And when people learn to pass those exams, um, they don't learn in the classroom. It's not any better than in the United States. Oh, here you're saying that's true in here. I don't know about Canada, but in these places that have all these exams, yeah. Around them, I know. I, I've heard in Africa they, there's actually a model whereby the teacher actually doesn't teach a lot in the class, and the parent pays the teacher to do tutoring after hours for their children. Oh, yeah. it's, it's just not working. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm not sure I will really answer the question, but I, I would make two additional remarks about the first one. Uh, how to capitalize? Well, I, I'm quite okay to um, integrate some functions, services that I have, we're, we're showing this morning in new systems. That could be certainly the, the, the way to, to go on. Um, the things we have not so much discussed is uh, lifelong learning. And I'm not sure that the, well, the environments should be the same and the, and the pedagogy and the, the help system and the like for kids uh, from uh, maybe uh, age to, to 16 and from, uh, for adults. And uh, uh, it seems to be sure that for the future, uh, the, the citizen will have to learn during all their life. And maybe we have to bear more attention uh, on that new, uh, new needs. So that's one point. Uh, the second one is about learner affect motivation uh, that we talk about. Um, I was thinking about professional training and for, for youngs. Um, maybe uh, teenagers or 18, uh, 18 aged uh, young people, they are not motivated, but they don't know what they want to do. But they are sometimes, they, they have to make a choice. And so they are studying and they are not motivated. For, for adults, when you, are, when you have a job or you, you want to change job, you are motivated. You know, you know what you want. And so you will uh, try to, to, to reach the goal. But for those young people, they have no goal. So it's another point that we have not uh, addressed. And maybe there are, um, there are ways or helps that could be provided to them, but um, the, 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 the only motivation, uh, we cannot start for their for, from their motivation because they don't have one. We have to raise motivation uh, among them. Well, that will be all for the, for the students, but also for the others. Uh, don't hesitate to drop a mail if you, if you want to discuss later or if you want uh, a reference or any other data. Thank you. Be short. <laughs> yes. So, um, so I just want to connect to what. Um, <laughs> because I am tired. Um, on uh, lifelong learning, and I think so. It's an important point. So, affect is important. But metacognition is also very important. Uh, we've seen people uh, they are doing research on it and how to make this uh, intelligent learning technologies. Let's not talk and call them intelligent tutoring systems. The name sounds a little bit obsolete, but these intelligent learning technologies to look at these aspects of learning and how to scaffold that, right? Which kind of goes against a little bit to what I presented today because there is no way to do metacognition there where 
you're staying at this uh, superficial level. But I think that you know, looking at this uh, fostering the uh, general processes that are conducive to learning is very important and can be very effective to help with lifelong learning. The other point that I want to make is uh, I don't have a, a ready-to-wear answer for how solutions from cognitive science and AI research field can reach the user learners. What I know is what we shouldn't try to do. Now that we have all these new interaction technologies and all this new, uh, you know, the very rich data, what we shouldn't do is really try to just throw the data back at the learner and the teachers. Because one reason why I believe our intelligent technologies and other um, computer-based technologies haven't been adopted as much is because teachers often find it um, too time consuming to understand how it works. They're not always reliable. There is a lot of overhead in adopting them and using them. And um, you know, here we are in danger of just making more of that, of technology that they see as very time consuming to process, to understand, to fit into their own uh, methods in their own uh, procedures. So I, I think it's really important that we try to gauge carefully what it is that we can give them and what it is that, what it is that they can digest and what it is that can fit easily in what they already have to make smooth transitions that would facilitate the adoption. I know I'm not giving any solution, but I just know what we, you know, what we, what we shouldn't continue to do essentially. Yeah. Okay, thanks.